Are you looking for best travel cameras? Our experts found thousands of feedback online for best travel cameras and shortlisted them. This suggestion is created for those looking for their ideal best travel cameras. You can find more information and updated pricing on the product mentioned in the description below. Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II offers improvements over its predecessor, making it more comfortable for shooting while maintaining its compact size and capable performance. The G7X II is built around a 1-inch type CMOS sensor, giving it better image quality than a small sensor compact camera or a smartphone. The built-in lens is a fast f1.8 to 2.8, 24-100mm to zoom, providing a lot of reach and decent low-light capabilities in a small package. The tilting touchscreen LCD makes it easy to set up and take your shots from any angle, making it ideal for selfies or street photography. The image quality, especially color rendition, is excellent on the G7X2. Its fast burst shooting enables you to capture the action. The grip is comfortable in the hand, and the control ring around the lens can be set to smooth or clicky, making it useful for both photo and video shooting. Our criticisms of the G7X2 are a relatively disappointing battery life and slightly mushy fine details in JPEGs. Overall, the Canon G7X2 is a well-designed enthusiast compact camera that can capture good quality photos and videos. This pocketable camera is a significant improvement over its predecessor and sits near the top of its class. For more information about the Canon G7X2 and all things photographic, head to dpreview.com. My name is Ramey McManus. I'm a restaurateur here in Idaho. I'm in the middle of building a project uh, with my business partner, a restaurant called Kin. My last venture was a small restaurant. My partner and I built the whole thing out. Four months, a little under $100,000 got us up and running. Whereas Kin is a larger project, over a million dollar budget. So obviously there's quite a few stresses and uh, pressure that goes along with a project of this size. So a few weeks ago, I decided I'd sneak away, get on a bike, and ride through Sonoma County. Yeah, as we sit here, you'll probably hear some construction in the background right now. I've been a cyclist for most of my adult life. Became a professional cyclist at the age of 26. Now, cycling is much more about adventure for me and you know, enjoying the ride. I recently spent 14 days in Iceland, uh, nine of which were on bicycle, carrying all my gear, camera gear, Typically on rides, I'm always using a small point-and-shoot camera. This is my first time with this Olympus. It was a larger camera than I normally carry on a bike ride, but with the strap, it was no problem at all to ride around with it. So it was nice to have a few more dials at my disposal. I didn't feel like I was out of my depth at all with it. Our ride started in the town of Healdsburg, a small community surrounded with scenic vineyards and renowned cycling both of which we were here to enjoy. Thank you. The camera's Pro Capture mode shoots at up to 30 frames per second and starts capturing images before you fully press the shutter button, ensuring you get exactly the moment that you want. If you're using a tripod, an ultra-high res mode allows you to create 50 megapixel files by combining multiple exposures. Our first stop was at Kivera Vineyards. The estate practices biodynamics, which is a holistic, ecological approach to farming. But it's best known for its world-class wines. This first one is a rosé of mainly Grenache, but it's got approximately 10% of Morved, Cunoise, Syrah, and Petit Syrah blended in to add to the complexity. After a delightful wine tasting, we got a tour of the gardens where Ramey immediately recognized many of the herbs being grown. Uh, lemon and verbena, oftentimes we'll uh, make sorbets or ice cream using this. Mm. Now I'll put it in your hand and smack it. Just, just, just yeah, now smell it. Wow, yeah. It's <laughs> the concept of biodynamics emphasizes how every element of a farming system has value, and Ramey reflected on his own experiences, utilizing some produce that might otherwise go to waste. So as a restaurateur, we actually go out to the farms and harvest with the farmers. It's a little harder on the bar side. You know, we came up with a drink called the Moron, which is Welsh for carrot. Perfect. They didn't know how many carrots they had that had a little mite, so they couldn't sell. And so they invited us out and we harvested 400 pounds of carrots. So we juiced them all, 
carrot, aquavit, gin, a uh, little bit of lime juice. That was the first drink that we came up with, our first signature cocktail. Our next stop on the tour was the Alexander Valley Vineyard, where Matt Murphy, a third generation member of a winemaking family, gave us a tour. All right, well, I'll uh, take you guys in and show you our wine caves here. The caves were insane. Cyrus Alexander was given 9,000 acres as a land grant in 1842, and so my grandparents bought it. In 1975, he started the winery officially. We have about 25,000 square feet of cave space. We currently have about 9,000 barrels in here. I'll just keep trading glasses. Keep trading Notice how smooth the oak flavor is in the wine. So yeah, we're still very much a family-owned and family-run business, an estate winery. We're up on the hill where the uh, Alexander and Wetzel family graveyard is, and uh, we're looking back on the hills above our ranch where the uh, King Cave fire burned through on uh, the night of October 26th and Sunday the 27th. It came down this side of the valley, blown by the wind, and burned right across the top of our ranch here and right down to where we're standing. There's a hedge there next to the tasting room. It's about 20 feet away from the tasting room that's burned. So. Well, this yeah, burned right, right where we're standing. Yeah. Burned right down the side of the hill there. It burned pretty much everything it could without burning the building, so we, we're very lucky that everybody did their job and saved this place, so. Down the street, Soda Rock Winery. That place was absolutely devastated by the fire. It was, uh, it was heartbreaking, for sure. After the fires, you still see so many people visiting and so many people supporting the local economy. It didn't feel like people were staying away from Sonoma. With our visit to wine country complete, it was time to take on the King Ridge Ride, considered by many to be the jewel in the crown of North Bay cycling roads. To get things started, Ramey shared some fundamental tips for photographing one's bicycle. Number one, drive side out. Number two, big ring. Number three, pedal at three o'clock. Number four, balance on your handlebar. Number five, shoot it square. Number six, quit taking photos, go ride. I started out on the coastline, moved inland through winding country roads with groves of redwood trees, which brought the temperature down, and then you would crest a mountain and the sun would come back out, warm you up, warm your soul, and eventually coming upon the ocean views as the sun went down, that's what riding in North County, California is all about. This trip was really nice for me to be able to get away for a couple of days and clear my head. At the same time, you draw inspiration when you go on trips. And now I'm coming back to Boise with a clear mind and full heart and ready to complete this restaurant. My name is Jason Vong and today I'm going to show you how to hook up your Sony camera to your computer to be used as a webcam for live streaming. You will need a few items to get started. A camera with an HDMI output port with a tripod, a USB to HDMI capture card device, and a HDMI cable. So let's go ahead and dive into the specifics to ensure that you have all the right gear. Just about every Sony camera, including the Alpha and the RX series, have a micro HDMI output port. But just to be absolutely sure, I highly recommend looking up the camera model and finding out what size is the HDMI. It will be either full, mini, or micro. And believe it or not, there's a huge difference between a mini HDMI and a micro HDMI. I personally use the Alpha 7R Mark IV and the Alpha 7 Mark III and both use a micro HDMI connection. Next up, ensure that you're buying a USB to HDMI capture card device and not simply a USB to HDMI adapter. The capture card device is what allows the feed of your camera to be sent to your PC or Mac. There are several good options out there such as the Elgato Camlink 4K and the Aver Media Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus. Personally, I have the Elgato Camlink which is incredibly compact and small which helps when I want to live stream even when I'm out of town. Now just a quick heads up, if you're using a Mac with only Thunderbolt 3 connectivity, you will need to get a Thunderbolt 3 to USB 3 adapter in order for you to connect your capture card device. 
Lastly, the HDMI cable. The capture card device will likely take a full size HDMI, but on the other end of that cable has to match the size that your camera takes. In my case, I will need a full HDMI to micro HDMI cable for my A7R Mark IV and my CamLink. Simply connect them all together and any software that can recognize a camera connection will list your capture card device as an option to be used. This includes Skype, Slack, Zoom, and even Google Hangouts. You are now even ready to stream on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Now, if you do see your camera menu items being displayed while you're connected to your computer, simply head to the menu, find HDMI settings, info display, and turn it off. This is what's known as a clean HDMI feed. Also, to ensure that you're in focus while you stream, enable face detection autofocus. Your camera should also be in movie mode and continuous autofocus should be enabled. If face detection is not showing up for whatever reason, simply find file format in the menu and change from 4K to HD. Definitely download open broadcast software, commonly known as OBS. And to use this software to stream to Facebook, YouTube, or even Twitch Live, simply copy the stream key from those platforms to OBS and start broadcast. And that's it. Hopefully this has helped you out and have fun on your live stream.